ladies. Welcome back to the Curate for Women Network. For those of you who are here for the first time, I'm your host, Victoria Armstrong. And today we are here with the beautiful Miss Karen Landry. Hello, Karen. Hey, girl. Hello. Okay, so for those of you who do not know Karen, Karen is a chef, influencer, now author. And most of you may know her from the Married at First Sight New Orleans. Yes. Hello. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm good. Like, how you really doing? You know how people be like, how you doing? And you be like, I'm good. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I'm really okay, doing. Okay. I'm, I'm like, I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. So, Karen, I have started the last couple of episodes off with the definition of like, you know, what does this word mean to you? What do you think about when okay. you say this word? Tell me, what do you think about when you hear the word this is so cliche, but it makes me think of you. When you think of the word determination, mm. what does that mean to you? For me, I think it means like really persevering and pushing past like anything that may be in your way mm -hmm. or that may come at you. Mm -hmm. um, and just really being able to like move has things like you know you have the de determination to continue to keep going mm -hmm. that's like the biggest thing at least for me in my life right now yeah so do you feel like you've always had to be like that like persevere you always had to like push past something that was either not normal or something that was just uncomfortable or just hard mm -hmm. Uh, definitely. I I don't think I realize like how much I have to push past. I don't think I like take time to really sit and be like, oh man, all these like crazy messed up things or random things or challenges. Like I just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of that is like how I was raised to really just like keep going. Um, I was raised in like a Christian household. Mm -hmm. So like there is, you know, like with God, there is nothing that you can't do. <laughs> yes. So it's like you have the determination to really keep going. Mm -hmm. And that resilience. Mm -hmm. um, so very Christian household, meaning your parents, they're still together. They were together mm -hmm. while you were coming up. Tell me about your life coming up. So my parents are still together. They've been happily married for over 40 years. I'm bad with dates, so I don't know the exact years, but okay. it's been over 40 years um, that they've been married and together. And yeah, very Christian household. Like I still remember as a child, my mom would always emphasize like, do you know your dad has read like the Bible word for word all the way through? Karen, what you say when your mom would say stuff like that? I would be like, okay. Or like, why? <laughs> right. <laughs> why did you? I'm do like, that? all right, like, <laughs> what? What does that mean, right? Was your dad a pastor? No, he wasn't a pastor. Okay. Just... Was he y'all's pastor? No. Did he every now and then just be like, okay, the Bible says. He actually wasn't like that, which okay. is like the weird thing, right? But your mama was the Bible thumper. She yes. was the one that was like, yo, daddy. Yes, <laughs> and she was the one that would be like, the Bible says this, and this verse, it says this. Mm -hmm. And like, she was the one that was like really pushing that. But at the same time, like my dad has always been a very godly man. Like mm -hmm. he's always the guy that's like, you know what? Like pray about it, keep God first. Mm -hmm. like. Still to this day, like nine times out of 10 of me and him are on the phone before he gets off the phone, he's like, make sure you put God first and everything will work out, baby. Oh, like he's, he's- That is so sweet. It is. He, I have like, especially as an adult, I have so much respect for him because yeah. he doesn't cram it down your throat, yeah. but he like gently reminds you. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Nuggets as parents to just be this aware that like you can teach your child the love of God without like teaching them the fear of God as if God is like this gun toting, you know, you get it wrong and I'm going to shoot you down. Right. But I got um, both sides. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of us were taught religion in that way. Yeah. You know, a lot of us were taught like a relationship with God in that way. And so fear yes. to God is not always a healthy, you know, it's not always a healthy thing. And so we find yeah. ourselves like growing up, becoming adults and then learning like 
oh, this is what the love of God feels like. Yeah. I think that that's also so dope that your dad is like, you know, he is one of those people who has read the Bible I don't know how many times yeah. and then still remind you of how gentle his love, yeah. um, gentle his love is. Okay, that yeah. is beautiful. Okay, so then now that brings me to my next question. You oh, come from okay. a very traditional, no, they're okay. fine. <laughs> There's going to be, at uh, every now and then, you'll hear her dogs <laughs> in the back. They're super cute, and perhaps you'll get to see them at some point, maybe. Yes. I don't know. Um, but don't be surprised if you hear dogs. They're not locked in cages. They're in a room, and they're having a great yeah. old time. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you come from a very traditional family. Any mm -hmm. siblings? Yes, I have one older sister. We're six years apart. Mm -hmm. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Um, <laughs> six years apart. Extremely different, mm -hmm. but like I think one of the best parts I think of like again you you know you see things and you're in one space as like a child mm -hmm. and like an adolescent, but now like going into well I'm an adult now, but like watching our relationship like change mm -hmm. over the years of like me becoming an adult and again she's six years older so like she, she's probably always been an adult in your mind right yeah. it's always we're always in different spaces yeah. and phases because at our no life. point were y'all ever in school together ever right <laughs> it wasn't like oh i'm in ninth were you grade like an annoying little sister to her was she always like you can't come with me and do not ask mom and daddy because they gonna make you she was kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> So then she over the years, kind of you're like saying that, that y'all's relationship has morphed from more of like a you little sister get mm -hmm. out my face to more like we're friends now. Yes. 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 Okay. So tell me about that. Like, how did that oh, transition girl. happen? <laughs> I used to tell her, I'm like, you were mean to me when I was little. Like, she didn't make me feel like she wanted me around. And again, mm -hmm. as an adult, I get it. Like, yeah. your little sister following you around. Yes. Um, Like... I didn't have my own room until she left oh. for college. Oh, girl, she was over you. <laughs> right. It ain't have nothing to do with you. Girl. Crystal, I'm going to speak on your behalf. <laughs> it ain't have nothing to do with you. Right. It's the fact that your parents thought that it was cool to put two I, girls yes. six years apart in the same, in the room. same room. And, like, <laughs> I will say that didn't last that long. Yeah. Like, I feel like... I primarily slept with like my mom mm -hmm. or I would sleep. We had like a, um, we called it like a playroom. It was like mm -hmm. a den mm -hmm. slash computer room mm -hmm. slash junk room. But like my parents eventually put like a day bed in there for me, mm -hmm. but it didn't have real privacy because yeah. it was like everybody room, everybody's room. Yeah. But there was just somewhere for me to sleep and it I didn't have like a real. I kind of hazed you a little bit. <laughs> Oh or your God. sister. I don't know. I guess it depends on perspective. Because your sister was probably like, all this space up in here, yeah. and y'all gonna make us share a room together? Yeah. But Just to keep a junk room. But see, in the <laughs> other... Cause, and then the junk room, it didn't have real doors. It was like... Because, again, we're talking, like, this is back in, like, the 90s. So, you mm -hmm. know, like, the 90s homes, everybody yeah. had, like, the wood paneling oh. and the shutter doors and yes. stuff. Yes. Like, there was one of the, like, shutter doors that you would close. But, like, it wasn't real privacy. It's not yeah. a real door. Yeah. We had one of those rooms There's no lock. <laughs> yeah. like, and it's not adjacent to anything that matters. Mm -mm. It's probably close to the kitchen yep. or a dining room. The dining room. Okay. Yeah. It oh, would girl. open on two different sides. Yes. So it would even o it would either open to the Karen, dining room. you probably room. grew up in my house. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It would open to the dining room or it would open to, like, the, the foyer. Right. Or the hallway. Which is right by the Depending hallway. Depending on the kind of ghetto house you live in. Because yep. in my house it was a hallway, it wasn't a foyer. I'm young, so I remember they put that like rail on the bed too in my sister's mm -hmm. room so I wouldn't fall out. So it was that's why I was like, I get it as Karen, I get it didn't it. have nothing <laughs> to do with you. Your sister was like for six whole years. Yeah. I was the Free, only child. Right. Free getting sick. Oil, getting treated like a little princess Correct. Correct. and now this little demon baby has <laughs> come and take it's away here. right and then the nerve of it to be a girl <laughs> like why well, can't be a boy 
sister. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe this is just how I felt. I don't know. But yeah. I felt like the annoying little sister that yeah. she really didn't yeah. want around. You probably were. Yeah. She wanted to play with her <laughs> friends and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so, again, we were in different phases. It's like yeah. she started working. I'm yeah. still in middle school, like mm-hmm. elementary school, playing yeah. around. So, it was just a lot of... But to be the youngest, you seem to be very mature. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because your sister always sunned you? Like, she was always like, please go on, figure it out. Like, or, <laughs> like, I know that we kind of spoke before this and you were telling me, like, you pretty much had to become an adult mm-hmm. before you were an adult, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think that that contributes to, like, why you're so calm and why you're mm-hmm. so mature? I don't know if Ross, you remember, but my the lady that raised my dad, that was technically our cousin, she was mm-hmm. blind, but she's lived with my she lived with my parents. She passed away now. She lived with my parents since they were married, mm-hmm. and so like as a child, I've always had to take care of this like blind woman, like in middle wow. school, high school. Yes, like I was like literally like CNA yes. duties like she yeah. couldn't go to the bathroom but you know oh like when my. she got older like she couldn't was bathe. she always blind like she raised your dad blind um so she went blind I believe in her 30s oh um girl could you imagine yeah that would I don't yeah as an adult I'm like that is like that would be like the most that would be like top tier devastation. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. So then y'all had to. So wait, was she in her thirties when she raised your dad? No, no, no. So, okay, well, so your dad got to experience like both parts both of her. Both parts of her. Okay. Yeah. But when you know, years later, me and my sister come along. It's like we have this elderly blind woman living with us that we also have to take care of, and both my parents worked. So like mom and even like watching my mom, like she would constantly put herself on the back burner because it was hard for her, especially when she started getting like dementia and stuff. Mm-hmm. She would girl, she'd talk to my mom so crazy. <sighs> and you know she's not in her right mind, but it's still hard it still to hurts. deal with. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, I didn't even it didn't hit me how much like responsibility I had. Yeah. Cause like I would have to leave like Say it was summertime and I'm like playing with my friends. It's like you need to go home and feed tea because she can't feed herself. Oh. So you have to leave, go fix her. So when she became blind, she never really learned how to be independent. I think she was in the beginning, but again, like these are. Oh, because she had dementia and then. Yeah. So this is like years later when she like physically just could not do it for herself. But those were so like, even though you're the youngest, you still had to take on this like position yeah. as an older because you had to mature quick to be able to do yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I didn't even realize like that and how it affected me, like honestly, until probably when I was like sharing my childhood with Miles and stuff, he mm-hmm. was just like. That's not normal. (laughs) And I was like, oh, well, it's just what I did. Like, even cooking. I'm like, my mama was at work. We would need, Ah. like, you know, food. Like, she didn't play that. She's like, you and your sister have to figure out some kind of way to contribute. And it was easier when Crystal was there. But, Mm -hmm. like, she's... Graduated. Yeah, she's six years older than me. So, it's just like, once she left for college... All of that fell on me. The reality is when you grow up a certain way, it is normal for you. Right. It doesn't (laughs) matter what everybody else thinks and what's going on in everybody else's household. I mean, we could all share stories of like how we grew up and everybody would be. Let me tell you. I didn't realize how jacked up my childhood was until I got married. Yeah. Yeah. And I would be talking about like all these inappropriate movies that I've watched <laughs> growing up. <laughs> like, and I'm like asking Ross, like, how haven't you seen that? And he'd be like, why have you seen right? that? <laughs> like, why do you know what you know, girl? Yeah. Especially because like growing up in the 90s, yeah. I was a child growing up in the 90s. Yeah. But... I can share experiences with people who were like teenagers and young adults growing up in the 90s. We be here. Um, 
which is probably why all of my friends are much, much older, older than me. Yeah. And um, see, that was something, another thing, like I've, I've always had friends my age, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong, but like when I got to college and especially in grad school, mm-hmm. like the people that were like eight, 10, 12 years older than me. Drew, they like drew to you. Yeah, yeah. and we'd be talking and they'd be, oh, you're so mature for your age. Like everyone <laughs> has always told me that. Yeah. But it didn't click to me where some of that like maturity came, came from. from. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, other kids. Or too, then you have, have conversations to. with people that are actually your age, even now, well into adulthood, yeah. and you're just like, grow up. <laughs> it's really insane. Yeah. The amount of maturity that you lack. Yeah. From what I'm hearing, you had to mature at a very young age. So yeah. adulthood probably started for you like immediately after high school. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm going to college. I yeah. am. Fully aware of how to live on my own, be yeah. on my own, operate in these streets. Like, I'm, yeah. we good. And my parents, like, they were there for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, yeah. like, especially, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially, like, financially when I was going through college. It was very, like, do yeah. you need anything? Are you okay? But, like, I've always been, like, super independent. Mm-hmm. So, like, even if I do need something, yeah. I'd be like, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I'm not about to ask you. You know, I'm a, the stuff I need, need, like. You probably couldn't do it no way. <laughs> right, I'm right. <laughs> or I, then I'll ask for me. it. Right. But I'm like, when it came need, to I'll just, ask. like, little stuff, like, I even joke sometimes, like, with my dad. Because when we were growing up, he'd be like, you don't ask me for nothing. He's like, but your sister, she'll <laughs> ask me to pay for her hair, her nails, this and that. He's like, you don't ask for none of that. I can so see that with your sister. Let me. T- your sister <laughs> used to be one of my clients when I did nails, girl. And like, we would have these conversations, and I would just be like, that is so beautiful. We never really talked about like her upbringing, but mm-hmm. but just like the way that she thinks about things, the way that she communicates things. I'm like, you could tell that y'all grew up with like parents who were just like in tune with you. Cause she totally understood her space in this world. Yeah. Whereas like, I'm, I'm kind of like you, like I, it, and we're so different, Vicky, by the way, me and Crystal. Yeah. Like I wish I had more of her. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to put myself first attitude. Yeah. And I don't know where she got that from, really yeah. and truly. I'm like, those six years. Well, first of all, she's the oldest. Yeah. That's how my oldest brother is. Yeah. She's the oldest. She probably, like, I had to I had to start here. Yeah. Right? Like, and then probably had to train you to do it. Yeah. And then so by the time she graduated, she was probably like, I am sick of taking care of people because you know yeah. you could it goes like it can go two, two separate different ways. ways yeah like you could leave home and be like I want to be nothing like what they just yeah. taught me and as a matter of fact I have way more autonomy than than right. than I had in this house and mm-hmm. that's that's who I'm a channel yeah. versus you were like these things were embedded in you but you probably had more people teaching you that your sister your mom your dad yeah yeah. Both of my parents worked. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like my dad worked in a plant, so mm-hmm. he would be gone all the time because mm-hmm. he's doing like 12 hour shifts. You know, he's having a 45 minute hour commute to work. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom, she worked in banking, and mm-hmm. so she would be at the bank all day. Okay. And so we were at home with T. So your dad worked at a plant, and your mom worked in banking mm-hmm. in the 90s. Yeah. Y'all had a lot of money to be putting them in the same room <laughs> together. <laughs> and so y'all were definitely hazed. I just wanted to throw that but out see, there that y'all was really hazed. Girl, but but see, I'm kidding, because y'all were taking care of I was, like, well, not, the elderly. We were. We were def- definitely okay. taking care of. But like... <laughs> T yeah. had the extra room. Yes. Right? Okay. I so figured like, that that's what that was. Where there were traditionally like, oh, we have, because it was a three-bedroom house. We have okay. three bedrooms. We have our living room. Gotcha. And then we have like a a den, the you know, thing, mm-hmm. which is where that where day bed was. <laughs> <laughs> and that was bare. Like, I slept with my parent, my mom so much, yeah. right? Because my dad, too, was he would work. 12-hour shifts. Yeah, 12-hour yes. shifts. He'd be mm-hmm. working overnights, like, depending on where he was. Like, yeah. my mom would just be in the room by herself. Yeah. So, it's like, I slept with my mom. Yeah. 
so much. Yeah. And then they finally got me like the day bed because yeah. me and my sister working to get, like sleeping yeah. together. That just that was a no go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Y'all should have known. Me. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, it was like no girl. Um, but your mama gonna watch this and she gonna be like, "Girl, you don't know me." Girl. <laughs> she I'm is. just kidding, Mama Landry. She is. <laughs> but that's how we grew up, though. It was yeah. very like. What do we have to do for the betterment of the home? Like nothing Correct. was about you individually. Yeah. Like your wants didn't matter, yeah. right? It yeah. was like, what does the home need to function? Yeah. So, so your mom raised you to be very thoughtful mm -hmm, and very, like definitely thinking of other people yes. before yourself. Yes. So how does that contribute to who you are today? Oh God, I feel like it... Like, I love it because my mom is truly one of the most, like, thoughtful, caring, kind people, like, mm -hmm. on this planet. She will do anything for anybody. Mm -hmm. But I also hate it because yeah. I feel like it has made me constantly consider other people yeah. before myself. Yeah. And my mom taught me, too, to be a very forgiving person. Mm -hmm. So, like, oh, when people do things, even if it hurts you, you should forgive them. Right. And so, like, I also feel like I forgive mm -hmm. sometimes too easily. Yeah. So it's like all of those things combined, naturally, I put myself on the back burner yeah. a lot. And I'm like one of those, like, okay, this is uncomfortable. It's not exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. My own needs may not be being met, Great. but how can I show up for this person still? Yeah. Right? Yeah. My mama didn't play. She's like, I'm at work all day. Your daddy's at work all day. Like, we come home. Like, yeah. she like, Tea girl. needs to be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, take that yeah. chicken out the freezer. Yeah. Fix tea something to eat. Okay, like, what happens <laughs> on the days that you forget to take the chicken out the freezer? Oh, have you ever man. forgotten to take the chicken out the freezer? I'm sure I have. I just have, I don't have like this one Because your mom seems like that very like poised, like Karen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> from what I'm hearing from you. That's that mama face right there. <laughs> um, yeah. Because now we can't eat because of you. Right. Now we got to go to McDonald's because you didn't take the chicken right. out. Okay, so but what happens in real life? Like if you forgot yeah. to take the chicken out, then what that looks in like? In real life, we figured out. Yeah, you okay. know, we, whatever that meant. Like rather that was, okay, what else do we have in the freezer that we can, we can defrost quickly? Like what leftovers mm -hmm. do we have that we can throw together? Um, this sounds like a very healthy, like, balanced household. Let me tell you how it was World War III. If my mama was at work and she said, uh, Victoria, Stacey, Tracy, Brandon, one of y'all take <laughs> the chicken out the freezer and she got home and wasn't out the freezer. What really used to happen was my mama would come home, like we would hear her pulling up in the driveway and then Brandon or somebody with the more responsible brain would be like, oh, we didn't take the chicken out the And then so we would run and we would be like, I don't know what's wrong with that chicken. <laughs> The chicken is the chicken, it's not me. Okay, so you came from very traditional family. Mm -hmm. um, parents met a very traditional way, I'm mm -hmm. assuming. Married 40 something years. Yeah. What did they say when you said, <laughs> I'm going on a reality TV show oh, to Lord. get married? Um, so I told my mom first. Oh because I'm a daddy's girl. So I was I was scared to yeah, tell my daddy. Today. Like I was okay. like, "Oh my god, this man, he's going to flip," right? Yeah. Um so He can't even vouch for your husband cuz you don't even know who he is. Right. I can't <laughs> vouch for nobody. Like <laughs> So my mom when I told her, she was kind of in shock because mm -hmm. I was just like I gotta tell you something I want you to have an open mind mm -hmm. and I was like there's this show that I heard was coming out like me or that would be filming I said me and a couple of my friends applied and I was like I'm getting pretty deep into like the interviews and so I was like I want to give you a pissed. yeah I want to give you a heads up that this may be happening and again, traditional family. So she's like, you would live with him? Well, are y'all gonna sleep in the same bed? Are you gonna sleep in a different room? Like those were her first questions. These are normal questions. Yeah, and she's mm -hmm. like, 
how do you, how do you know who this person is and what if he's crazy because like my mom and I think this probably comes from like her childhood mm -hmm. she immediately goes to like he is serial killer yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Old people don't play with reality TV. Right. They're like, what? Yeah, she Your like. Your mom was probably thinking like, I know I raised you better than that. Right. Now, why do, think, why do they think Girl. that reality TV is just the hardcore demon? Girl. But I'm like, mom, I'm like, cameras are going to be in the house. Like, she's just right. worried for my safety right. more than anything. Right. Which I get. As she should be. So she went, she watched some, like, episodes, and she came back. She called. She talked to me. She asked me more questions. But, like, she seemed a lot more open to it, like, after she watched the show. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, don't. So did she go and watch, like, a previous season? Yeah, before? previous okay. seasons. Good yeah. Job. <laughs> So, you know, she started easing into the idea and mm -hmm. then she's like, well, we're going to have to tell your daddy. Like once we realize, like, OK, yeah. these people are probably going to select you because yeah. like with Married at First Sight, the whole thing is that even as you're going through like the interview process, mm -hmm. they don't tell you you've officially been selected until they tell you that you have a match. a match. So you could be like still filming with them, but it doesn't mean that you'll be selected ultimately. Okay. And so, you know, I'm going through this whole process. I'm interviewing, I'm starting to film with them. And so finally, like we have to tell my dad, like, hey, I got selected. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure your dad is the type of guy, because <laughs> I don't know y'all. I'm pretty sure your dad is the type of guy who always thought that whoever you would be marrying would be asking his yeah. permission. Yes. And they are still very traditional. Like, so did he, uh, so after you got married, did he still have to come back and ask your daddy, like, I know we did this already. But my daddy wanted him to. Did he do it? Mm -mm. Oh, girl. Because this new generation, I mean, millennials, we like slightly trash a little bit. <laughs> As it concerns trash. the way that like our parents want us to be. Yeah. I'm just being honest. No, yeah. Okay. So daddy daddy now knows that yeah. this is happening. Daddy knows. Literally, like if you follow Married at First Sight, there are like three three experts, four, I don't know, three, four experts that are usually on the show. They call them experts. So mm -hmm. like they like there's a therapist, <laughs> there's a pastor, okay. um, you know, another yeah. person. They changed them since I was on the show. But yeah. Like, I was very, I even told, like, the Married at First Sight people, I'm like, my daddy ain't going to go for this, y'all. Like, he is not going to be happy. I'm like, this is going to be the hardest. A hard table will probably be flipped. <laughs> right. I'm like, this is the hardest part out of this. Like, it's already mm -hmm. hard for me, but I'm, like, telling my dad. Because, you know, truthfully, that's not how I envision yeah. my Were wedding day Were you crying before either. you went to your daddy? Oh, girl, balling, <laughs> balling. Did like, that matter <laughs> at all when you told him what? Oh, child. Um, literally, the pastor that's on the show mm -hmm. called and talked to my daddy. Before you did? No, like oh, I, after oh, I told okay, my dad, okay, like okay. to give him basically some reassurance okay. because... That like... We have done some deep, deep research. Yeah. Okay. Because I heard that y'all had to go through like extensive, like psychological, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, what do you call it? Like examinations yeah. to make sure that you were mentally well enough yeah. to like do this. They say that. Okay. Because <laughs> we're going to explore, like, we're going to keep talking. I mean, technically, we do it. Yeah. Okay. But then you also find out some of the people that okay. wind up on the show and, yeah, you and like, you're like did you really pass? well i mean some of it i feel like it's just good for tv <laughs> like right you right. totally failed this but the people are going to eat mm. this up uh, eat it up they're yeah. gonna love it okay um, I, I can totally see all of it and my dad he's a very again like have so much respect for him mm -hmm. he's a very no bullshit type of person mm -hmm. your daddy read the bible a gazillion times look baby he he told a <laughs> pastor he wasn't a real pastor okay oh, He's like, you're doing this for TV. He's like, this is a TV show, 
right? Like, Karen, what did you say? <laughs> At some point, did you say, tell your daddy, like, you really about to mess up the opportunity of a lifetime if you don't quit doing Look, it? I wasn't even a part of the conversation. Okay. Like, they called my parents, like, well, the pastor, I will say, the pastor. I hope you had a gazillion of these cocktails that we drink in right now. Look. <laughs> called him separately and like even the pastor came back to me pastor Cal is his name and mm -hmm. he was just like yo he's like your daddy's tough like he's like I yeah. see where you get it from like he does <laughs> he like your daddy does not play like he's protective of his daughter like he doesn't like the BS like he mm -hmm. doesn't trust this and like my dad at one point even which I know in my heart of hearts, it was him being mad. But like mm -hmm. at one point he was just like, I don't want to be coming. involved. I'm yeah. not coming. Yeah. Because I mean, in all honesty, yeah. these people came up with this concept and it is crazy. It is. It's it crazy is. to think that these experts, yeah. you are strangers to me. You yeah. don't know my upbringing, not in real life. You yeah. don't know where I come from. And, and until you're actually married or in this very long relationship, mm -hmm. You don't even know the type of triggers that are triggers because right. somebody ain't called him out yet. Right. So that's, I'm, I'm sure your dad being married for as long as he's been married yeah. is like, this is not a game. This is right. not an this experiment. Is my this yeah. is my daughter. Yeah. I respect it. Me too. That's I, what I totally said. I have it. so much respect for him. Like, what, especially looking back on like my journey the last mm -hmm. three years, I have so much respect for that man. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've been, <laughs> I've been with my husband for 11 years. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the dating pool. And so I'm assuming <laughs> that it toxic. looked, smelled, <laughs> act, behaved like the sewage yeah. or the Mississippi River yeah. to push you to do yes. this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we please talk about dating prior to this show? Oh God. Dating was trash. Like... Nobody wants to be serious. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be committed. Mm -hmm. Like everyone, I felt like in my previous relationships, everybody wanted to put me kind of on hold. Like, you're a great person. I don't want to lose you. I'm a player. I'm still Y'all remember that song where he was like, when I'm done being a player, then I'm coming back to get you. Yes. Okay. That is what I felt like. That's so trash. All of my, like the guys that I was like super into, I felt like none of them were ready. None of them. And it's like, I still want to be with you. I still want you in my life, but I'm also not ready. And I'm, I'm not even talking about marriage. Like I'm also not ready for like this super serious level of commitment. I feel like that's both childish and mature for somebody to even say something like that because how old are you? That's what makes you childish. <laughs> but <laughs> but very mature of you to not be like trying to string me along. Well, no, that was the problem. They would Oh, they still, would string. Yeah, they would still want all like, the perks, for real, all go the to hell. Yeah. Okay. So, that's what I was dealing with. And okay. so Again, how I was raised, like I had an internal battle. Like mm -hmm. this was so much deeper than like, oh, I'm just going to go on this show and like yeah. I'll get to be on TV and mm -hmm. like I may or may not. Like for me, it was like, Karen, this is not how you were raised. Yeah. Like you, when you envisioned your wedding, like your wedding day, like you envisioned like getting to know that person, trusting that person, like you know, like knowing that person, being in love with that person before you say I do, mm -hmm. right? And You fully had to trust the experts with this. Right. I fully had to trust these experts who yeah. literally don't know me from Tom, Dick, and Harry. And truth be told, <laughs> like they're, most of them were in different stages of their lives too. Yeah. So it's just like, y'all don't even truly understand How the dating pool. How do you even pool. create like, a, a clear perspective of what of who somebody is that you haven't even met yeah see and that's why I didn't trust it like I can genuinely say yeah like like I didn't trust it we know we saw <laughs> I didn't we trust get the, it we, we know this yeah. was like I knew it like wedding day you were like right uh, okay that, we gonna get yeah. there so so okay very trashy dating pool. Mm -hmm. I do remember that you were dating this guy for five years mm -hmm. and then he ended up having a kid. Yeah. Did you know about this kid like when the girl was pregnant or this just came about like over time <laughs> and you were just like, what? You got a kid. Oh, Lord. The kid's younger than our relationship. What? So 
He admitted he cheated on me. Okay. Which, you know, again, I told you I'm a very forgiving, forgiving person. person. Mm-hmm. Um, Dudes ain't worth a damn. Yeah. We, Especially not in their early 20s. <laughs> I was going to say, we were in our early 20s. We're young. Mm-hmm. But, like, I didn't know that there was a baby. Yeah. And then, like, I guess once the baby was around two, like, apparently the girl and, like, her grandmother, like, showed up at his house, like, nigga, this is your baby. Like, okay. you and I feel like that was God showing up at your door, like, Karen, hello, yeah. get out. Because I, I, like, I genuinely thought, because, like, he was my, I'm beyond, he was my first love, like, yeah. adult love, I will yeah. say. He was my first adult love, yeah. like, I thought I would marry him. Yeah. You know, we were on again, off again, because yeah. it's, it's, we're in our, like, we met, I think I was only 18, mm-hmm. technically, when I met him, and yeah. it's like, we dated for, like, a year, we separated, yeah. but then we came back around, got back together. Child, R&B will mess up Child. your whole love life. Oh, what is this song life. like? It's like, if you love something, let me Right, go. and you think it's going to come back. And if it back. comes back, <laughs> then it's how you know you're full of shit. Right. When you part. came back, I should have slammed the door in your face. Yeah. But it's okay, God did. Right, right. God so did. So screw him, we not spending no more time on yeah, him. Yeah, God so, did. So, pool crappy. Five-year relationship, you totally wasted my time. Yeah. Um, at this point, I'm like, you are feeling like I'm getting older. Mm-hmm. It's about time. All yeah. right, so you go through this whole process. Yeah. I'm going to skip all the other extra stuff. Yeah. Wedding day, mm-hmm. when you got that text message from the producers. Oh, girl. And that was the day before the wedding, actually. So the text message, it was from one of the producers to my best friend with the guy's name in it. Did this producer get fired? Like, I'm just curious no. because you just, I mean, no. I'm sure that was still not even cool for him to do, for him to even be trying to send it to I'm going to be friend. honest. I don't even, I have a regret about that because I wish I would have av- again learning. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have learned to advocate more for myself in that moment because that was another for me breach of like trust. Like this Mm -hmm. doesn't feel good. Like Mm -hmm. what's up with this? Mm -hmm. How could you literally text my groom's name like to my best friend? friend. And like y'all know. And then if your best friend would have kept it to herself, you probably would have been like, girl, you out of line for that. Because you know this ain't my type. Right. (laughs) Well, not only it was, and it wasn't even about like that like I think just my anxiety Mm -hmm. like my lack of trust Mm -hmm. me knowing like it's tv because I'm like again I had this internal struggle I'm Mm -hmm. like on one end what if it does work out what if I do find the love of my life what if it's this crazy story Mm -hmm. and I was very much so in a place in my life and I still like till this day feel like I'm in that place but Mm -hmm. I was like I need to start being comfortable with being uncomfortable because I've played everything like in that safety box my entire life you know like you go to school you get the good job Mm -hmm. you work you you know you you do everything the safe way like you're not worried about creativity you're not worried about like oh what you feel like going do today like no everything is business and you're checking off the boxes so Mm -hmm. it's just like that's how I was. That's how I grew up. This and is totally outside of your to- true like, comfort zone. I don't think people understand. I think they do. How- I think the sh- <laughs> I think they do. I think they were just like, now why? I think a lot of people were probably thinking like, why would you do this? Like, yeah. you know that it's a total surprise. You know that yeah. you it can or cannot be that person yeah. when you get to the altar. Um, but also I'm like, that's the human part of this experiment, Mm -hmm. right? This is the, people come from all different types of backgrounds. You can compare me to such and such who was raised by her, whoever she was raised by, uh, that probably abused her, talked crap to her. And so Mm -hmm. she's just like a true flower child. Who knows? Like, you never know. You don't, you don't. Um, but the human side of this is I was raised in a very traditional mm-hmm. household. My parents would never go for anything yeah. like this. And so this is you battling these very, yeah. like, all of these different opinions as well as 
Yeah. What you're feeling on your own. Yeah. New Orleans is small. Mm -hmm. So the minute I saw his name, you Googled baby, him. Baby, no, Instagram. I didn't. Instagram. No, I already knew the minute I saw his name. We had already talked about it. We have oh, mutual friends, so we knew each other known. before. So, of course, the streets were already like, who's signing up for Married at First Sight? What oh, guys do you gotcha. know? And I knew all of this literally before I even got his name. Like, I knew he was one mm -hmm. of the candidates. Didn't know him personally. Mm -hmm. I'm very realistic, too, so I'm not this just caught up. Exactly. I'm not caught up in the fantasy of, oh, yeah, you know, like I may be meeting my person. That's yeah. a piece of it. Mm -hmm. But then the realistic side of me is like, this is a TV show and you really don't know why people are doing certain things. So when I think about TV shows like this, honestly, it makes me think that like these girls really get to create their wish list mm -hmm. because how else? Yeah. Outside of like your personality, your upbringing or whatever, mm -hmm. do they get to match you with somebody? Yeah. So is there a portion of this process where you actually get to write down the list of like what my husband should look like? Mm -hmm. I wasn't completely close to someone like younger, mm -hmm. but I mean, let's, let's keep it a hundred here. How do men mature compared to women on average? Girl, you did <laughs> little to be explained. Okay, this is curate, safe place, oh and God. everybody already knows. So I need my man to be older or at least my age. Right. And so I was like, I'm not completely <laughs> close to it if he is. And I'm too this... young to out here being out a cougar or something. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, I get it. Okay. So, yeah, so it was, that's what I said. So the age there, thing was like the biggest thing for you? That was the biggest thing okay. for me, the age thing, just because I didn't know like how maturity would be and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And you um, are very mature. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah. But they called you a hopeless romantic, which I thought was somewhat disrespectful. I mean, <laughs> I get how you can get to this place, but a hopeless romantic sounds desperate to me. Yeah, and I wasn't desperate. No. And that's, that's I think, a thing that people also don't understand about me. Now, I will say, when I'm in it, in it, I ain't gonna lie, like, I'm that hopeless romantic. Yeah. I lose my boundaries. Yeah. I be accepting <laughs> stuff that I shouldn't Should be accepting be. Mm -hmm. when I'm in it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, when I'm not in it, Mm -hmm. Like, you damn right I'm about to figure out who you really are yeah. because I'm about to be tied to you. Yeah. And so for me, um, like, the age was a big thing. But, and this is something, of course, that didn't make the show because it didn't necessarily go with the storyline. Mm -hmm. But, like, again, New Orleans is small, mm -hmm. so people talk. Mm -hmm. And so I heard some things that weren't the greatest to hear about, about someone that you are about to be married with. Um, just in, not anything like too serious, mm -hmm. but just in terms of like- A red flag. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit of a red flag. You mm -hmm. might want to be careful with this. Yeah. Um, so there was that piece too. Mm -hmm. um, oh God. It felt, it's funny, I say curate. Yeah. It, even like looking at his social media, it felt very curated, curated to give you a certain viewer image mm -hmm. of him, mm -hmm. which felt weird to me. Like it felt like there were a lot of gaps and I'm very analytical too. So baby, yeah. yes, I'd be looking at like, well, where are the pictures from 2017 to 2019? Like yeah. where did that portion, of, did your that portion of your life go? Like that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and so like there were just like, again, from things that I heard from people like that literally told me from the age thing to feeling like, okay, is this more of a, I saw like a quote one time about people's social media pages and it was basically like, it's basically your ad for life. Like your social media is yeah. showing like this, the portions of you that you want people to see. Yeah. But I'm like, what's underneath that? Yeah. Cause like this is curated to look perfect. Yeah. But yeah. what's underneath that? Correct. Um, Cause I'm not a surface level person, which right. is again, something that I think a lot of people they may see it as like, oh, you're so harshly judging, but it's like, I'm actually trying to understand from a much deeper level. Like mm -hmm. you can have a great resume, you can look good on paper, mm -hmm. but what's underneath that? Yeah, I hate social media, especially like trying to use that to gauge who somebody is mm -hmm. or where they come from or yeah. whatever. It's, it's just not, it's yeah. just not accurate. The question that I know everybody, cause I mean, prepping for this episode, <laughs> I'm like, 
Googling y'all. Mm -hmm. And so literally less than two weeks ago, people are still creating vlogs and blogs, mm -hmm. trying to figure out if you and Miles are still together. Yeah. Karen, yeah. are you and Miles still together? No. We're not even gonna dive into like what happened, how mm -hmm. did you get here? More so like you did this show, mm -hmm. right? And quite frankly, you were the villain. Yeah. One of the villains yeah. for that season. How do you feel like, how do you, how did you feel going through that experiment with a total stranger and also trying to fight for like true representation of who you are? Um, I don't think I even knew enough to know that I should be fighting for true representation of who I was mm -hmm. because we don't see anything until the rest of the world sees it. Yeah. We don't know what storyline they're trying to create until we it's see done. it, oh, right? Until okay. it's done. So it's like in the process of filming, they will ask you questions over and over again. And you're like, why are you asking me this? Why are you a asking me this? I answered this 20 times before. Mm -hmm. But it's set up like that really and truly because they want to be able to piece together what they want to piece together. Yeah. So it's like I could have said something at a completely different time than what they showed it. Gotcha. Because it's OK, because then it makes <laughs> sense for like the whole text message situation, the day that you were getting married and they yeah. made it seem like that conversation was happening right before you walked yeah. to the altar. But that's not it. My friend got it the night before. Like, we talked about it. I mean, my friends are protective of me. Yeah. So, like, they're looking, they're asking questions. Yeah. They're like, wait, what's going on? Yeah. As honestly, anybody would. What? Like, let's be serious. You don't know who you marrying and you get their name delivered to you. You're yeah. going to be like, okay, well, oh, well. Absolutely. But again, I already knew the minute I got his name, which is what people don't understand, it wasn't like, oh, she got his name, then she went and Googled him and came up with her own yeah. preconceptions. Yeah. It was, oh, we talked about this guy two months ago, yeah. and now this is that same guy, guy that, oh that I gosh. just found out, and now I'm adding in the things that were told to me and now I am I'm revisiting because again I saw his social media yeah. before now did you I'm push, revisiting did this. you push through this to like prove something to yourself or absolutely yeah. I Come feel on. like I did it for myself okay. like like I said I was in I, I'm scary Victoria like yeah. I like to stay <laughs> in my box but yeah. I really do feel like on the other side of fear, you get liberated. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, do I want to live the rest of my life being in a box? Yeah. And like, I just playing it safe all the time. I'm yeah. like, what has playing it safe gotten me? Yeah. Like, it hasn't stopped anything negative I've been through. Like, yeah. it hasn't stopped any of the abuse. It hasn't stopped any neglection it hasn't stopped any like anything bad from happening to me yeah. right it's just been you play things safe yeah and so i just for myself i wanted to break out of that and yeah. like i still want to break yeah. out of that oh see that was going to be my next question <laughs> like did this kind of bruise you when you were thinking like, I got to get out of this shell that I'm living in. And then you got out of the shell that you were living in. And, and it seemed to be a little fears. bit more raggedy. Like, you know, are you just, because oh, I feel like yeah. at a certain point, we have to get to a place with, with ourselves mm -hmm. where we can fully, fully, fully trust God. Yeah. Oh. Coming out of your shell is really just this declaration or in my mind should be this declaration of like, okay, God, I am coming out of this safe space of like trying to predict everything yeah. that could happen to me and just totally giving every part of me yeah. to you mm -hmm. and allowing you to really shape my life mm -hmm. for what you want it to be. Yeah. Because girl, when most people get to that place, they cut their hair off. Like they go pixie cut. <laughs> You went reality TV show and married a total stranger. Yeah. Um, how do you feel right now? Do you mm. feel liberated? Do you feel like, because y'all haven't even like publicly announced that you were not together yeah. anymore. Yeah, and I mean, 
that's something that, you know, by the time this airs, it will mm -hmm. be publicly announced. But like, that's been hard for me for a number of reasons. Like mm -hmm. one, let's be serious. Nobody wants to talk about divorce. Mm -hmm. Like divorce on its own is hard enough by mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. Let alone like you're still processing it. Yeah. And the world wants you to let you in yeah. uh, or wants you to let them in. And so like that is extremely hard. Um, you asked me how I feel like I'm in a very weird space mm -hmm. because it's like, OK, you are recovering from having your heart broken. Yeah feeling like you were just abandoned. Mm -hmm. um, you're recovering from that, but you still are. And that's the beautiful thing I will genuinely say from like all of this, like my relationship with God, mm -hmm. like I want to trust God. Yeah. And I feel like he didn't let me go through all of this for a reason. Yeah. He didn't let me get selected, like as daunting as the entire process was for me. He didn't let me get selected yeah. and like have this platform yeah. for no reason. Mm -hmm. And so like, I don't even fully know what's next. Like, I feel like there are many days where I'm like, I don't know up from down, I don't know left from right, mm -hmm. but like, I am truly fully leaning into God. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's all I have right yeah. now, right? Um, and so like, I don't want to be the person that is just like, you know what, I give up on everything. I'm just gonna disappear and be this hermit crab. Yeah. Even though there are so many days where yeah. that's the only thing I wanna do. Yeah. But um, Karen, I am so proud of you and how you have chosen to like use your platform to still be a bright light and to still like show the side of you that your family knows and that your friends know. Yeah. And it and it really should, I think, give people, especially people who are close to you, a different outlook on people who are on reality TV shows. And like, this is not, this is only a slither <laughs> of who this person is. Yeah. And like, to say that is giving it too much, right? Yeah. Um, but to also just to give grace to people who put themselves out there, who do things like what you do. But I mean, most people who watch this show, I'm going to be honest, this is the first season of this I ever mm -hmm. watched because I saw you on there. I never watched And I know that before. we have a mutual, <laughs> like we have a couple of like mutual friends. Um, and just growing up in the same city is like, yeah. you see the same people like your whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I literally watched that season yeah. because of you. And so I know that that has to be really hard to watch something like that play out mm -hmm. in front of everybody who has strong opinions yeah. about you and they don't know you. And to but villainize they, somebody that, yeah. quite frankly, has never been a villain to anybody in their entire life. Like, yeah. that's insane. And people don't think about how hard that part is, you yeah. know, when they're giving all these opinions, mm -hmm. it's like, you don't stop to think that, what if she's not like this at all? Mm -hmm. And this is how TV painted her. Yeah. Like how hard is that? Yeah. And she's still going, Yeah. you know, like people were like, oh, you know, you didn't even like him and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm the one that got my heart broke. Yeah. But y'all don't stop to think about that and yeah. like how hard that is to carry. Like, yeah. I'm the one who was committed to this relationship. I'm the one who really wanted marriage. I'm not the one who just woke up one day and changed my mind about wanting a romantic relationship. Yeah. But still people have this perception and yeah. they think they know so much that they don't. Well, I was interesting. I was thinking about this as I was driving down here. We're gonna we're gonna move on because mm -hmm. I want to talk about more happy things that yeah. you have going on. I was thinking about this coming coming in here because I was like, I want to watch the wedding mm -hmm. over again. Oh, girl! And so because I I, I was like, I, I want to get like the the perception that TV gave mm -hmm. no. of the version of the conversations that you and I have had. They really like when you look at the show, that very that episode where y'all were getting married, all you hear is like you behind this door getting ready for the wedding. And you're like, oh, 
this is who my husband is going to be. Like, he's not my type and he's younger than me. And, you know, I looked him up on Instagram, blah, blah, blah. And then they literally flipped to him and he's like, and there, his friend is asking him, like, well, what are you going to do whenever, what is it going to be like when you see her walking down? And I was like, oh, it's like baby girl. Mm. You know, she's going to be like, I'm just going to look at her. And she's like, she's the one. And so they literally painted that picture then. Mm -hmm. So, like, we're storytellers, mm -hmm. right? We totally understand fully how to tell the story that we want our audience to receive it in the way that we want it to yeah. be received. I don't think that, and I feel like I can say this, probably not you, even if it's whatever, but I totally feel like you were not represented well. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you had a fair chance for people to know who you are, um, because they started to create this narrative from the, from very, the very beginning. beginning. And it's like once that is tarnished, yeah, everything goes downhill. Yeah, I'm a reality that. TV. <laughs> like I love you, you. I know yeah. that you said that you never watched reality yeah. TV before this. Reality TV is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> I love to hate <laughs> yeah. people on reality TV yeah. shows, but then I also think about like. They have so many people who love them, care about them. Mm -hmm. They got parents, children, mm -hmm. like, and this can't be that person. Yeah. I do have that thought in my yeah. mind. But while I'm watching them on TV, I'm like, oh my goodness, this girl is trash. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's horrible. And I get, and I do like, I, I get that. Right. Yeah. I get that. It's just like, I wish people would stop like. People think they're disappointed watching it. Like, oh my God, why isn't she giving him blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how do you think I feel watching it back when I'm like, wait, I didn't say that in response to this. Or yeah. why didn't y'all show any of the good things I said? Like, of course I look like mm -hmm. a bitch if you're mm -hmm. only showing these bad things yeah. but you don't you're reserved <laughs> when in all honesty you are a pretty reserved person in general but yeah. then y'all like y'all um, really y'all really tried it yeah y'all really tried yeah. it yeah um so it's funny because people be like your family needs reality tv show the hell we do <laughs> and anybody who married know that you don't put no cameras in no married people house and Child, expect them to unless, be really real right and no. unless it's y'all controlling it, you feel like yeah. that's one of my lessons. and we wouldn't even do that right i'm like my life is my life i love it y'all gonna get me here right here yeah. um in this space uh my kid has gone viral and like now mm. he's like he, we were laughing the other day. I'm like, my baby is an influencer. That's hilarious. Right. He doesn't even know what that Has means. no idea. However, when Ross is in the hospital, when Ross is going through his very, like, things that make mm -hmm. us, like, I would never expose my kid yeah. in that way. Um, and so, you know, we make, a, we make decisions and we do put ourselves out there. But I do want to say that, the way that you have continued to move and go and grow and deal with you, what you have been dealing with, you're still enjoying your life. You just left Dubai. You always talk yes, about Dubai. Yes, Dubai was wonderful. Yes. Okay, who, were, who was that with you on this trip? <laughs> so Dubai was actually a trip that me and Miles were supposed to host together. Mm -hmm. um, but that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the second trip. That he left you stranded. Um, what was the first trip? First trip was Dominican Republic. Okay. Um, so very similar situation, but mm -hmm. ultimately we didn't end up going. Mm -hmm. um, this time I, I learned my lesson from Dominican Republic and how that was handled. So mm -hmm. I went on the Dubai trip solo by myself, mm -hmm. um, which we didn't formally again announce anything so it was just like okay karen y'all have be been hosting. like super hush yeah um i know for me like it was important to respect the place for myself where i was yeah. and the fact that i'm still processing mm -hmm. and i didn't want to say anything prematurely or announce anything prematurely mm -hmm. did you ever think at some point that y'all would work it out i hoped we would mm -hmm. But again, needing a certain level of effort, yeah, needing a certain level of accountability. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna be honest, there are still some days where I feel like I'm waiting on that, right? Yeah, not in a sense of like, oh, I think like we'll be back together because I think yeah. like it's just been too much too long now. But 
Do you feel like gaslit? Is that a word? Is mm-hmm. gaslit the word? Or do you feel like he like, you know? Um, <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I feel very, I honestly feel very bamboozled. Yeah, I mean, in real life, he looks like I have all of my crap together. It's, it's, and, and he was very open about his, mm-hmm. his depression. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it made him seem vulnerable. And so, but it's like, but it's crazy. So, and this is another quote that, and I'm not like quoting it exactly, but mm-hmm. it was something I saw and it was saying like the things that we don't talk about, mm-hmm. that's what we need to talk about. Like that's mm-hmm. what make us, makes us vulnerable. Yeah. The stuff that's like easy for us to talk about and be like, this is my platform and this is who I am. Correct. Like not taking away from obviously any of like the pain and yeah. the struggle and the things that that caused, yeah. but like, it's so much more to a person than that. Yeah. And it's like, if that. And how does that affect the person that he's with? Yeah. And the decisions that he's making? Yeah. And those are the things that I feel like people don't take into account. They don't. They just hear that story and it's like, oh, I instantly feel sorry for him. Right. Right. Or I instantly like empathize with him. Yeah. But Um, they don't care that Karen gets depressed or has been depressed yeah. or is still even battling depression. Like yeah. I don't get that sympathy, right? Yeah. They don't care that I have this crippling anxiety that like popped up during filming and the mm-hmm. show, like, because I didn't go on TV and just be like, Oh, like I have dealt with depression and anxiety yeah. too. Because true to your nature, yeah. you're a pretty private person anyways. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not to say that you're not vulnerable. Yeah. This is not this platform. Right. It's not this platform. It's not the time. Like, even the things we've discussed today, like, there's still so much to my story that yeah. you don't know. I haven't disclosed. Yeah. Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> but she it's, coming for y'all. <laughs> but it's just like people, they don't stop to think about all the layers. Yeah. And I don't know. Like, that's, again, another thing this experience has taught me. Like, truly... People may not like what I say, Mm -hmm. right, or how I say it. Mm -hmm. And I'm also taking responsibility because there are times where I need to say things better. I need to articulate more clearly. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like, what I say is real. Yeah. I'm not giving you a show. Mm -hmm. I'm not acting. I'm not pretending. This is true to who I am. Right. I'm not saying, like, I'm not on display, like, okay, I'm about to be, like, Miss Presidential and just give you the things that you want to hear and that sound good, right? Mm -hmm. Like, no, let's talk about it. To learn from your daddy when he cut up on this. <laughs> I'm like, no, let's talk about the hard stuff. I'm yeah. gonna challenge you. You're saying one thing to me, prove it. Yeah. You like me so much. Why, sir? You don't even know me. Yeah. You're in love already. Yeah. How? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. cause I want again. I'm not yeah. a surface level person. It's not. Yeah. Oh, we look good. Yeah. We look good on paper together. We match on paper. This is gonna be great. Or like, oh, we can laugh together. Right. Like. I'm about to trust you with everything. Like, it's right. not that easy for me. Because, um, I, I mean, I know I'm not the only woman out there, but how many times do you meet the guy? Or even how many men do you know where on paper they look great, they look like a family man, they look like they have it all together, but then... I am such a people watcher, though. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but then, because you're not surface level. No, You're not looking at all. deeper and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, but these things aren't yeah. really and adding And I think that up. perspective comes from a lot of our upbringing, like where we come from, like surface level, surface level to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. My life growing up, yeah. I came from a very like nice family, yeah. right? We were a very close knit family. People who didn't necessarily know us probably wanted to be a part of my family. Yeah, We were super crunk, okay? And very <laughs> lit. Everybody wanted to be a Ducree. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Right. Yeah. But the, the perception that people had of my family wasn't actually who we were. Right. And so that is why I am consistently pulling back the layers yeah. of who people are and what they are. And mm-hmm. I'm always so inquisitive, like, why are you like that? I wonder what made her do that. You know, yeah. things like that. So I totally understand how, like, none of this is good enough. Yeah. Dude, I'm not blind. I know I look good. You ain't falling in love with my looks, though. <laughs> right. like, like, you ain't the only person who think I look good. Right. 
Okay, so and I've, I've been there before. Like yeah. you know, like I've had the good guy looks great on paper, and yeah. then it's like, oh, but this is how you may treat me. This is how you may do. Or oh, baby, you still got a whole lot of work. When to it do. takes the time to when you take the time to get to know me, mm-hmm. like truly get to know me. Like what my poo poo smell like when I got to use the bathroom, <laughs> and you still right here. <laughs> Are you gonna be okay? Are with you gonna that? be okay? <laughs> Are you still gonna like me after you smell my fart? Right. Like, but even bigger than that. Right. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the the simplest things can turn people off. Mm-hmm. But then also, like, the most craziest things can, like, bring people together. together. Right. Um, do you feel like y'all got to that point with each other? Ooh, that's a deep question. For me, at least. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm trying to figure out how do I answer this, like, respectfully. Mm-hmm. I feel like I got there Mm -hmm. and I allowed myself to go there. Mm -hmm. I feel like he might have wanted to, Mm -hmm. but didn't truly. Yeah. Right? Like, you're saying that you're there. Yeah. But certain things that happen, Mm -hmm. I know you're not there because there are things that I would never have done to you. Yeah. That you did to me. Yeah. You know what's crazy though? You know what I learned about people over time? And probably a lot of this I've learned about other people because you have to learn these things about yourself first. Mm -hmm. Some people carry so much shame, right? Yeah. That for them to peel back those layers, it hurts too much. Yeah. Even to them. Yeah. It's not even a thing against you. It's not even a, I don't trust you, Karen. It's that once this door is open, it can't be closed. And I don't know if I can live with somebody knowing me in this way. I think a lot of people who battle depression and I think a lot of people who deal with that carries a lot of shame. And, you know, I hate that for anybody who deals with that. Yeah because it is a dark place to be. It is a, you know, it's so easy for somebody to say, you know, just free yourself, you know, yeah. just talk about it, just find a safe space, mm-hmm. just do the things. But it's like, no, yeah. like this could be in your mind, extremely detrimental yeah. to everything that I am if somebody knows X, Y, Z about me. It's yeah. the reason why women can live so long being raped by an uncle and not saying anything because they probably feel the shame of like, well, crap, I did have these shorts on in front of him right. a bunch of times. I have sat in his lap. Right. I have kind of played into things that I thought was inappropriate. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, women are probably just more open about that. Yeah. No, I I 100% agree with you. Mm-hmm. Um and that's another piece that people didn't see. Mm-hmm. I walked into my marriage, didn't tell America. I ain't give a fuck about America, to, right. to be <laughs> truthful. Like, yeah. I wasn't there for America, to please America. I was there to potentially find my husband and know him deeply, right? Yeah. And so, like, I walked into my marriage sharing those things that I was scared to talk about mm-hmm. and sharing the things that have caused me the most pain, yeah. but I do realize that not everyone is there yet. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. It makes me feel bad because it's like, I know mm-hmm. that I would have been there. I know mm-hmm. that I would have received whatever it was because I genuinely loved you, yeah. but I can't force you to be ready yet. I can't force you to want what you don't genuinely want. Like mm-hmm. if you don't genuinely want marriage, if you don't genuinely want a partner, or if you're just not genuinely ready for it, I can't change that. Yeah. I can be here. But at some point, I have to draw my own lines and boundaries because someone closing up and shutting me out, that's not going to go well when I'm pouring everything I have into them. Well, here's the good thing. Your love story, I'm sure, is not over because just like he was smitten when he first saw you, I am pretty damn sure some man is probably watching this like, sis, you don't know me. You don't know me. I'm capable, okay, especially for you. Um, And so I think sometimes we have to go through things like just to free ourselves, just Mm -hmm. to really know that we could do it, right? I can be vulnerable. That's in me, right? 
Um, and and I can and I can grow from this, and mm -hmm. you will grow from this, and yeah. you're gonna meet your man at some point. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, know. Um, I do have faith in that, you know, and I'm okay. Like I'm yeah. okay. I'm honestly, I'm not rushing. Mm -hmm. I like to get back into anything right now. Like yeah. If no, this, girl, have a good old yeah, girl like, time. This is all about me season and rebuilding, and I'm a very, very intentional person. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm not like, oh, I'm about to jump right back into something mm -mm. or anything like that. I'm like, no, like, that's part of the reason it's taken me so long to speak on some of these things is because I know myself mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. I know I have to go through my process. I know I have to heal, like, to even be open to being open yeah right yeah so this is what we about to jump right into let's jump right into it killer be cooking where you get the name killer from so <laughs> my like random people have always called me that yeah and, like i remember me and miles had a conversation about like nicknames and what people call me but i yeah. told him killer was one of it so like he started calling me killer on the show and I think honestly ah. from there it just like blew up. Mm -hmm. But like my friends before the show, like especially my friend Keisha, she'd be like, Killer K, you gotta show him who Killer K is. Like, yeah, you know, just it seems like around. such an oxymoron. Like it Killer, is. girl, it but then you are. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so Killer be cooking. Mm -hmm. And I be watching your Instagram and I'm like, girl, how do you know how to do this? Is everybody in your family a cook? Um, I have a lot of cooks in my family. Okay. Like I said, we grew up in a household where everybody chips in, everyone yeah. does Do something. your part. So it started as truly like a chore, like something I yeah. had to do. Like my mama was like, no, you're going to learn how to do this. Mm -hmm. One, because you need to learn for yourself. But then two, you need to help out around the house. Yeah. Oh, your mama wasn't even trying to say like, girl, you need to cook you ain't going to find a husband. Girl. My mama used to say that to me all the time. Ah. I can't cook. And look, you look. <laughs> You're like, I got my husband. But you're going to teach me how to cook. Are you going to teach me how to cook? Okay. You. I'm also going to be following these recipes in this book. Please okay, do. so. And this is like first baby project. Yeah. Right? I'm like. This for, is the appetizer. It is. I'm like, yeah. for the next one, like, I want it to be filled with, like, stories mm -hmm. and, like, sharing more about me and who I am and what I've been through. Yes. And, like, connecting it to food. Because food is, like. I go to real therapy, but like yeah. food is like my therapy too yeah. and always has been. Yeah. Like even when my mom, she taught me like, of course, the foundation of cooking. She mm -hmm. taught me like all the traditional Southern dishes, mm -hmm. but I was that kid watching the Food Network, watching like stuff on TV, like, oh, I want to make that. Like yeah. never have had it in my life, but that sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. Like a curry, what's a curry? Like what does yeah. curry powder taste like? Yeah. You know, like that wasn't what I grew up yeah. on. So yeah. I just honestly, like cooking was my creative space. Mm. And so I just started trying different flavors or I'd go out to a restaurant, like once I got into college and stuff and be like, oh, like balsamic glaze. Like mm -hmm. my mama wasn't making no balsamic <laughs> glaze, you know what right? <laughs> She might make some lamb, but yeah. it ain't gonna be like a balsamic glaze Girl, lamb. let me tell you, I didn't even know people cook lamb, eat lamb. I, <laughs> <laughs> and so, I don't know, trauma response, I I'm still done. don't eat lamb. <laughs> I'm like, that, that's an animal that should not be eaten. Uh, right. It's a very fancy, I mean, because I'm looking at this balsamic lamb in this book, Carrie, you really gonna have to teach me how to cook. I got you, girl. I'm total the opposite. Like, that's your therapy, that's my anxiety. Oh, yeah. And when everybody's asking me, like, what are we about to eat? What are we about to eat? I'm like, I don't know. I don't, like, I don't, so first of all, I don't even be thinking about food until I see the food and I'm like, ooh, yeah. I want that. Okay. I still you feel are a chef. so weird at calling <laughs> myself a chef. Why? Because, like, I feel like, and this is again because like, you gotta be in a restaurant and cooking, right? And I feel like I didn't go to culinary school. Like I just watch these people, and I'm self taught. And is I that just a thing? Do, it do you home. have to? I mean, is a chef like a doctor though? Like, like where you gotta go it's and get all not. these like certifications to be that? Because I think that when not. you can cook a meal like this, sweetheart, you are a chef. <laughs> this ain't no pork chops. This is not a pork chop. Even if it was a pork chop, and you made it like this, right? <laughs> I'm gonna have the link. You got a link for this? I do. Okay, I do. well, I'm gonna stick the link in the bite because I know that these cameras not doing any of this any justice. 
I mean, look how sexy she is on here. This probably not doing nothing. I'm showing y'all this, but they like, I can see her right now. <laughs> um, what What is next for you as far as this is concerned? I know that you're talking about like you're going to release a second book where it's going to be more about you and like how food is therapy to you. Does yes. this look like a show maybe? I mean, you know, I receive whatever God wants to put <laughs> upon my life. Yeah. I think that would be like so amazing yeah. um, to be able to do something like that I want to share more on like my YouTube channel like I want to be able to do like more cooking demos yeah but like really and truly like I think this season is about me authentically one showing up as myself but mm -hmm. then two like after what I've been through like mm -hmm. Some things you go through, you're not the same when you yeah. come out on the other side. So it's like, for me, this is also a season of like rediscovering and redefining yes. who Karen is mm -hmm. and what she wants to do and like what the next steps are. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I lived before this, I lived an entirely completely different life, right? I was mm -hmm. in HR, project management. I worked in healthcare. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't think a lot of people know I have three degrees. Like, you Come know, on. I was on a very different path. She's way more qualified than a <laughs> chef. I'm just, I'm just kidding. If you're a chef and you're watching this, no shade. I'm joking. But yeah, I was on a very different path. So yeah. it's like now having this platform, it's allowing me to go in like a more creative space mm -hmm. a more like just showing who you authentically are because truth be told like little bitty Karen in the boardroom or like in this meeting with like these doctors these mm -hmm. surgeons like these CEOs mm -hmm. these COOs like I couldn't truly show up as myself yeah right? I think you were at because you said something earlier where you were like, I live my life in this box mm -hmm. and I did all the things and, you know, basically like I'm not a creative. I am, you know, I got to get stuff done. Yeah. This is the season of you accepting the fact that you indeed are a creative yeah. and chefs are creative. Yeah. But they're also yeah. analytical. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming because y'all got to measure the stuff Girl, to be right look, for these and dishes that's my to taste. point because... <laughs> I don't really measure. Most people who cook don't. Right. Okay. It's like, just me. Can you give me the specific? I'm let like, me tell you how many times <laughs> I have made jambalaya in a box and I still got to get a measuring cup for the amount of water yeah. that's supposed to go up in there. Yeah. You know, some of but us you just. you know, rice is, rice is funny. Rice is a hard one. Child, it could be broccoli at the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I still got to. Give how me the many exact cups. Of, right. Yeah, okay. So that's me. <laughs> Um, most people who cook, who are great at it, they yeah. don't have to do that. All right. Um, I think that that is amazing. So Karen, nice. for the younger Karen, mm -hmm. the little girl who is taking care of tea and fighting with Crystal, <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me what you would tell her today. Mm. I think I would tell her to not be afraid to take up space mm -hmm. and not be afraid to speak what she really feels. Like, obviously want to still consider other people's feelings, but don't feel like you have to put yourself on the back burner to yeah. uplift someone else or to yeah. make them feel better. Like, truly don't be afraid to take up space. Yeah. Um, cause I think I was a very shy kid too. Like I'm still, I still consider myself shy now. Like the mm -hmm. anxiety I get before stuff like this, like mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, like all eyes on me still makes me want to crawl up into a little hole. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Apparently I'm drawn to people like you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who's around me is just like this. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, don't be afraid to talk your shit every now and then. Like, yeah. you have so many people on this earth that yeah. will talk their shit. Yeah. They ain't even about it, yeah. right? They don't, <laughs> they don't even have the qualifications, but they're still gonna talk yeah. like that. And I envy those people a bit because I don't have that, right? Like, yeah. me who was taught to be like humble and like, Mm -hmm. essentially make yourself small to make other people comfortable like yeah. that's hard for me yeah because I feel like oh well am I I question like am I being cocky yeah but it's like no you have to learn how to be confident yes all right so now you're Issa Rae 
<laughs> and um insecure you mirror bitch yeah girl. you about to talk to mirror bitch i'll be in a mirror what are you saying to mirror bitch 10 years from now oh because <laughs> remember at the end of at the end of insecure yeah she was now her future self and yeah. she was basically okay so give me her who is Man. that <laughs> I'd be like, bitch, I told you, you could do it. Like, look at everything we have now. Like, you have yes. everything you want. You're happy. You got the money. Like, all it took was you truly stepping out on faith and, yes. like, trusting the process and trusting yourself, yes. trusting God. Like, yeah. and you here. Yeah. Like, and I want to have, like, I don't even fully know everything yeah. I want, right? Like, I'm mm -hmm. redefining that. But it's yes. like... I don't want to shy away from it and run from it. Yeah. I want to go after it. Oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> this was so good. So I'm so happy we finally got to do this. Me too. Thank you. Everything happens for a reason. Thank you. Oh, I want to toast to it. Where's my drink? Oh, look. Come on, let's toast. Mine's almost empty. I was about to say, I don't really have much <laughs> It's drink, okay. These were cuter before we did it. They were. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys for coming back and seeing us again. Um, if you want to keep in contact with Karen, I will put all of her information um, in the comment section below, but please click the link for this book because they got some really dope stuff up in here. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.